Hello guys, welcome to Tux Riders. In this video we want to discuss a little bit about different solvers and solver options available in FreeFem to solve the linear system of equations derived from the finite element computations. Let's go for it. So, uh, you know, the topic of solvers is actually very important. We will discuss it in a couple of videos. This is the first one. And in the future, we will have more also for projects that we discuss. We always, you know, we always need to deal with solver and solver uh, options, let's say. Similar to previous videos, we have a couple of examples here. I go through the examples one by one and in each video you will see uh, actually a new technique or a new way of loading the options and dealing with the solver configuration. So the first example is related to actually the problem definition that we are going to solve. You know, we have already discussed various aspects of this, including the mesh generation, the weak formulation and also finite element spaces. Uh, but uh, yeah, you know, this is a, the example that we already uh, used uh, in the weak formulation video as well. And uh, you know, this is the first example is just a base uh, to, to demonstrate what the problem is. In this case, we solve the Poisson equation, a simple diffusion problem. But on the right hand side, we have like uh, 10 times x. So this is actually a non constant, uh, let's say, function. And you know, it is just to make it a bit more complicated. And uh, the geometry is also a circle uh, with an internal. Uh, let's say rectangle on which we apply a Dirichlet boundary condition, a constant number, and also on the surrounding, uh, like the, the circumstance of the circle. And then, as you can see, the way that we solve it is using the varf, let's say notation, uh, which is, uh, as I told you before, it can be used to assemble the a equal a x equals b linear system in this way we have a the right hand side matrix as you know the uh, passing the p1 space finite element space to the weak formulation as u and v and for the right hand side b we have zero passed as u because that's actually the linear term that doesn't contain the state variable and here is uh, you know a technique that you can use to measure the solution time uh, like just to measure how long it takes for this statement to run, which is actually the way that, uh, which is actually the statement that asks uh, FreeFem to solve the equation for us. And then we plot x, which is the, or a state variable here, and uh, then uh, we see what happened. So uh, let me go to the directory of the examples you can find the codes in the link to the codes in the description so the way i run it is uh, like uh, similar to previous videos and i turn on the verbosity here and uh, yeah so this is the mesh you know the mesh size is uh, defined such that the mesh is quite coarse but later on we will make it fine a really small element size to check the difference between uh, solver different solvers that we are going to use so this is the mesh and i press enter this is a solution because we have a non-constant uh, function f and uh, yeah so this is the result and you can see the mesh is coarse i can uh, uh, refine the mesh and repeat it and on the command line it is also reported the way the uh, you know the time that it takes to to run so uh, yeah that was the first example and it uses the default solver to solve this you know we haven't said anything from the next examples uh, we try different solver options umf pack moms and petsy and then i want to show you why the best option available nowadays in modern free fan versions is actually the fourth one but to save time because we want to have like really fine mesh we have another script here that you need to run to generate the mesh it's you know create the same mesh in this case we can have like a fine mesh 
with really small element size and then it saves it to a mesh file called mesh.mesh in this case. And then the, these examples will load the mesh. So for example, this example, example two, you can see that instead of the mesh generation, we have like uh, this function red mesh that reads this. So before going on, I need to generate the mesh. So that was a uh, generate mesh and uh, the number is read through the command line argument. This is also something we discussed before. The default is to 10, but we want, we want to have like a smaller size. So we say 200 and then it takes some time and it reads the results to the, to the file system, which should be able to see it here. Yeah. So as you can see, this is a really like refined mesh, which is suitable to check different solvers to compare their performance. Yeah, so this is here. And then, uh, you know, instead of uh, having like uh, the, the, the technique example one that was actually uh, reading the CPU time before solving the equation and then comparing it with the red value after, uh, we use uh, some built-in Linux mechanisms to uh, measure the runtime of simulations because, you know, this is more robust in this record and I don't want to go to the details of stuff. So that is uh, more handy to, to use it. So the way that we can use it just uh, the in the first example is to check the performance of another solver, in this case UMF Pack. 64, which is with a double precision. So the default solver in FreeFM is uh, UMF pack, what with another configuration. In this case, what we need to do in comparison to example one is just loading the plugin that can be also done uh, in the beginning. So that's uh, you know a more uh, standard way of writing FreeFM scripts. But in this case, I just want to emphasize the differences. So I load the, the module of the solver and then I set A, which was the left hand side metrics, like set A solvers equals sparse solver. And for the concept of the sparse matrices and solvers, we have already discussed it in theoretical videos. But in this case, we set the solver to sparse solver and then we solve the equation. So for the first one, just before, uh, you know, going to uh, just check the performance of the system of the solver, I run it just to make sure that it generates the same uh, result as, uh, you know, example one. This is very crucial when you change the solver, you need to check the, the results. In this case, we compare it qualitatively, we check it qualitatively, but um, it should be quite okay. Yeah, this is the results. So as you can see, the, this is, uh, it is quite okay. And then, um, so I close this, you can see that uh, just before setting the parameter of A to spot solar, I increase the verbosity of FreeFAM so that I can see what is happening when I set the, the solar to sparse solar. And you can see here, this is UMF pack and with double precision is assigned to be used as the solver. So now it's time to measure the performance of this. You know, a good technique to, to do this is actually like uh, turning off with uh, the, the graphics. In this case, because we are using a sequential version of FreeFem, we can say no window, meaning that no graphical output. And then, uh, you know, having the command time. In this regard, this is uh, the, a Linux command that measures the runtime duration uh, of the provided command. In this case, this one. And then uh, in the end, we will have like the simulation time, like the runtime uh, measured in seconds. And the reason we pass NW is because we don't need to wait for the graphical output to be rendered on the screen and then we need to close it. So that's not a real time, uh, like a correct time measured. So I run this one and then it, in the end, it tells me about the time that it takes to run. So you can see that this is where it starts to solve the system. And, uh, you know, the, the part of the time is also uh, consumed, is spent on uh, reading the mesh. So we should consider this for sure. And as you can see here, you know, 15, 15 seconds uh, takes for the simulation to run with UMF pack.
And in the third example here, you know, we have exactly the same thing, same example as you can see, but instead of UMF pack, we have mumps. And I run this example with, you know, sequential free fam. MOMS is actually a frontal, multi-frontal solver. And it means that it attacks the AX equals B system with different fronts from different regions. It is quite nice for particular problems and it has some configuration. It has a lot of different parameters to set. And in this case, I do not set anything. I just said that use it. So it is not very optimized or tuned for this particular problem. But yeah, before continue with this, you know, one thing you should pay attention to keep in mind is that when I say it's multifrontal, it means that it's actually uh, like a parallel solver and it needs a parallel version of FreeFem to run. If I run this example with, uh, you know, the sequential version of FreeFem, so example three, oh, I need to provide it with the full name of example three. So example three, I don't want to measure the time and I want to see the graphics. So I press enter and you can see that it is it starts to load the sequential version of MOMS, but it's still when it's, it tries to initialize the MPI, as you can see here, it, it fails and as a result, we do not have correct results here, correct value computed as uh, like the solution of the system. But as you can see, we have some more output on a written on a terminal. These are the configuration uh, parameters I told you about. There are different things that you can configure here, uh, but yeah, it, 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 it didn't have correct values. So uh, as the output. So what I need to do is actually, I need to run the parallel version of FreeFab. I don't want to discuss these MPI things in this video. We will have a dedicated video for that, but here is just to show you that uh, we need the MPI version. And because the MPI version doesn't have graphical output, we should explicitly ask FreeFM to have the graphics. And for that, we need to say with graphics. So WG as uh, the terminal, as the command line argument passed to it, and then we should be able to have correct results here. So let's see what happens. And in this case, we turn on verbosity and then you can see that the mom's uh, solver starts to run. It has different configuration. The configurations are written to the terminal and um, uh, yeah, this is the output. We should, we need to wait for it to render. And yeah, this, so this is completely correct. And uh, yeah. Mm, here you can see that the initialization is also correct. You can also, you can run this and go through the, you know, various uh, things that are written onto to the terminal. And uh, generally speaking, the correct way of running this is to provide it with more CPU cores. But yeah, as I told you, I don't want to go to the details of, of this. In this video, we'll discuss it later. And uh, let me run it with time and then we don't need any graphics. So just to see uh, the time that it takes uh, to run a simulation with months. It should be slightly slower than UMF pack because as I said, months need to be configured correctly and uh, also tuned for different parameters and stuff. So yeah, you can see this is 19 second with months. So similar to these two examples, you know, there are different solvers available in FreeFem that you can take advantage of, but with recent versions of FreeFem, a better option is actually taking advantage of Petsy, which is, you know, we will have more videos on Petsy later on for high performance computing and stuff, but this is actually a scientific toolkit or framework in a way that it comprises of many different scientific computing solvers, preconditioners, and various relevant tools. And this is very well integrated into FreeFem. So you can easily, you know, call Petsy, load it and uh, use it. And I will show you how simple it is, even with one CPU core, when you don't have any specific configuration and you have your system here, you just want to see what happens if you go to use Petsy. And then with using Petsy, you can have a really like wide range of different solvers, including mumps that you can use. So instead of the traditional interface, 
or classical interface in freeform like this, what you need to do is just change the type of matrix A to math. I will show you an example four and load Petsy and that's it. And then you can have a lot of parameters configurable for the matrix A. So we go to example four and you see that the only difference is instead of matrix A, we have mass A with this uh, degrees of freedom, number of degrees of freedom for the finite element space and we load Petsy and that's it. The rest is exactly the same. And in this case, you can see that we have like different options available. So we say set A, S param something. These are the things that are really ne uh, not necessary to discuss in this video, but this is related to like the preconditioning of the system. So this is the preconditioner type PC. But yeah, these are really petty specific things. But uh, just to say it shortly, this is, uh, you know, the type of uh, preconditioner that we use here. So preconditioning makes a system easier to solve. And with Petsy, we have like a, com a combination of the preconditioner and solver assigned to solve the system, uh, you know, in less time, faster, let's say. And for this kind of problem, this preconditioner, which is actually algebraic multigrid, AMG, uh, preconditioner is the best. And I just want to show you uh, how nice it works. First, uh, let's check if it produces uh, correct results. So with Petsy, we also need MPI for sure, uh, because that's a parallel uh, library, there's a parallel computing library, and then with graphics, because we want to see if it uh, leads to correct results. So this is the solution using Petsy. And this is completely correct. So now we go for like having the time measured for us. And you can see that it is, it will be much faster. As I told you here, we also need to, uh, to read the mesh. So it takes some time for the mesh to read. And you can see that in total, it is nine seconds, much faster, you know, twice, two times faster with the time that we spend on reading the mesh. This is very important to consider. So I guess that it is like five times faster, six times faster, something like that from 19 to nine, including the time for reading the mesh. So here, uh, you know, uh, now we are inside Petsy and, you know, we have access to all Petsy options. Like, uh, for example, we can ask it to like show us the Krill of subspaces type. We can pass it here, like uh, to see what is going on. So I just, uh, you know, run it. I don't need time, but yeah, let's, let's have it with time. So it now we ask Petsy to print more information about a type of solvers used or type of preconditioners and all, all those things. So this is the time. And you can see here that we have like the Boomer AMG preconditioning, uh, as I told you, mul algebraic mul multigrid. And then we have like uh, an iterative solver instead of uh, a direct solver like MOPS. That was a multifrontal solver, and this is an iterative one. And we have already discussed iterative techniques uh, in theoretical videos for finite element and finite difference. And another way that I can pass this, you know, these are just examples. Instead of this, I can also pass it like uh, to the FreeFem uh, script directly, to the FreeFem uh, program directly. All these parameters are passed to. Uh, uh, to the to the Petsy interface in the background. So for example, instead of a KSP view, I can say KSP monitor. I want to see how the, the, the iterative solver uh, converges in this case, GM REST iterative solver. You can see that this is the, the, the way that the residuals uh, decrease over time and it converges. So uh, yeah, uh, so instead of, you know, using this preconditioner, I can go for some, uh, you know, like direct composition, in this case, LU decomposition. And these kind of preconditioners, they use direct solvers. So if I go for KSP view in this case, so I say KSP view, I just want to see uh, some more details about a solution. It tells me that uh, it is uh, it uses MUMS. I think it should 
use that because this is actually a direct decomposition method. Now, as I told you, we will have uh, more videos on in this record uh, later. And as you can see now, we are back to 19 seconds for this mesh size. And you know, this is uh, the typical mumps output. Now you know. And yeah, here we see that the the preconditioner is LU, and then we have like the type of the solver mumps. So mumps is used. I told you before that MOMS is also integrated in PETC uh, beside so many other options and solvers available. And that's why I told you that this is uh, actually a very nice uh, way of uh, solving these things. It, uh, just use PETC and there is no difference except that you need to change from matrix A to math A instead, you know, and, and, and that's it. So uh, yeah, let's let's just check another. Uh, oops, sorry, another uh, preconditioner type, another solver type. In this case, that's GAMG. I just want to show you that these options exist, and you can check check PETC documentation for that. And in later videos, we we do that actually. So this is actually SOR successive over re relaxation, another technique for solving. And you can see that yeah, different case B types are used, and the solution time is at 10 seconds in this regard. So actually, Boomer AMG was the best preconditioners among the three we checked. But yeah, as I told you, there are different options available, and for petty, uh, you know, parameters, you can set them here, or you can and pass them to the command line uh, interface here. So yeah, that's uh, what I wanted to discuss in this video for various solver, solver options. Yeah, there are more things to discuss, but before that we need to discuss a little bit about parallel programming in FreeFAM, and then we open the stage for you know high performance computing, uh, more discussion about PETC. So I hope you enjoyed this video and find it useful. See you next videos.